Hi, my name is Sting and I'm the principal trainer of Wilson Solutions. Wilson Solutions teach NLP and help people to excel in whatever they want to do. So now in this video clips, I would like to share with you a very basic principles of NLP. This very basic principle of NLP is actually called the NLP Communications Model. NLP Communication Model. This technique has been developed and has been widely used in all traditional NLP. And then it is something that is very, very important because we know every day we communicate with people. When we communicate with people, we know people actually having different types of method to receive information. For example, imagine this is the person, yeah? With the eye, with the mouth, yeah? This is the person. And we have five senses. These five senses coming into us through our five sensory authority. So what is that? In our term, we are using our eyes to see. Yeah? And then, when we are using our eye to see, we are also using our ear to hear. And at the same time, we have skin. Our skin can feel. Either the skin feels the temperature in the ambient, or I wear this shirt, it's very comfortable. So we feel. And we have nose. When we smell the smell of the roses, then we know that it's the smell of the roses. So we have smell. And tonight, my wife is going to cook steak, for example. And I eat steak. I use my tongue to taste. Remember when we was a baby, we are very young toddler. We start to move about in the house. We see our parents come home. We are very excited. And then our parents actually uh, put the shoe on the shoe rack and then walk in, hug us and carry us around. And at the same time, we talk to them. We actually, we always feel our curiosities. We do not know what is inside my mom's bag or what my father always carry the briefcase and then the shoe, the socks, everywhere. And I'm a toddler, I'm a baby at home. And I know nothing about the world of the adults. But I'm eager to learn. So what, what I do? I crawl to my mom's handbag. What I do, I take. And first thing, usually kids do, they don't have a look, they don't open up and look what's see what is that. What they do? Take a guess. Yes. They taste it. They put everything they reach put into the mouth. That is a very primitive learning stage of a piece for you and me. See? And when we taste it, we know ah, this one cannot eat. Then we throw it away. The next time I don't want to try because I really learn. Therefore, kids they eat a lot of germs inside the body. Yeah. And the smell as well. When we go out to Pasamalam and then we Malaysian, then we see and then we smell the smell of a popcorn and we say, tonight I'm going to have a popcorn. And then by the smell of the popcorn, I know which store actually is selling popcorn. And then of course we have a feeling. This feeling, as I mentioned just now, is either by our skin to feel the ambient, the temperature, to feel the cloth is either is either very soft or very very something like this is very tough, or is very I feel that it's very cold, 
or some people say something and I feel very happy inside me. So this is how I accept information from outside environment. And of course, you hear me say a lot of things. You receive information through my voice transmitted to you by the technology. And at the same time, you see my face. I don't see you because I don't know where you are. But anyway, we see things. Therefore, we have these five senses to accept all the information every second. In terms of psychology, when we have all these things coming into ourselves and we are dominant in either one of these. And as an adult, we are very seldom using smell and taste to accept information unless we are doing cooking. Other than that, majority actually we are using eye to see, I am using my ear to hear, and then I'm using the feeling, either it's my skin or inside the feeling. I feel encouraged to feel the world. And all this information coming into our mind, and in terms of psychology, it says the information is about 11 million bits per second. 11 million bits per second. This number, how does that come out to us? We do. Actually, I am not quite sure about it. But then it actually published, and then in the psychology, and then in the in the in the in the paper that they are published, and some people actually claim more. And eleven million bits per second that coming into us is a bits per information coming to us. As we know, even though you see here. The red color, if we are doing advertisement, we are the artists who do drawing or painting, we know that red color is di different. It's very different, different coding to different shape, different type of red. But for us laymen, I will see only one red. But for people who are in that field, they can say that this color red is different from another color red. Therefore, we can say that 11 million bits per second that coming into us per second is something which is quite uh, reliable. For example, if you are now sitting and listen to my clips, do you feel the pressure on your buttocks when you are sitting down? And do you now hear another voice of your surrounding while you are listening to me? But if you pay attention to what I say, you actually block up, you block it, the rest of the voice, the rest of the sound around you. Because you pay attention to what I say. And you also block out, delete the feeling of your pato, you are sitting there. Or maybe you are in the aircon room, you feel very comfortable, but you actually unaware of how the aircon is actually working. Maybe you hear the sound of the fans without I telling you, you actually blocking it out. Therefore, in terms of psychology, it's very, very important. Inside our brain, in our nervous systems, we have filter systems the filter system this filter system what they do they actually helping us to filter up we call delete distort and generalizations of the information all these three is a very important function for every one of us. The first is a delete. The first D is delete. Imagine if our mind, our brain, our nervous system need to process 11 million bits of information per second. 
how can it be our body can take this type of function like a computer system our system will end therefore the deletion is something that is very important for us to reduce the 11 million beings until it becomes only 126 bit per second it becomes 126 bit per second this is what the psychologist they found out the scientists they do and the figure is very very drastic change and this is somehow in our life whatever we do whatever you do is from this 126 bit and in other words this is what you focusing on if only 126 beat per second focusing in our life and imagine if you are now a millionaire you have to thank yourself by 126 beat per second you make yourself a good fortune and if you, we know that our neurology system actually deleted so much information and then it's only left this amount of information per second for us to process the information therefore this 126 bit per second is so precious it determines our outcome in our life therefore when you listen to me and you discover that this NLP actually helping us to change our mindset how to think, what to think this is what it is 126 bit and if we keep on maintaining this and this one is actually helping us to produce our internal representations on another words what you are focusing on here it becomes your character. This is become your character. It form your character. And this is your character. In our words, we call it internal representation. In short, it's called IR. Internal representation. Every one of us, we have our own internal internal represents something the informations and this is of course is our character and what does this IR do for us our IR actually determine our states what is a state this state is actually what is your emotion and thinking by now how you think and then your emotion right now is actually your states and at the same time it determines our visual logic our physiology our body our physiology all these three actually interrelated actually interrelated they affect each other and what is the end product of our internal representation our states and our physiology it actually produce our behavior so our behavior that is our result our life results what you do what you don't do our behavior is actually where does it come in from? It actually coming from our internal representations. Internal representation is formed because we have our own privilege and more dominant way to receive informations. And therefore, if a person receives information by a lot of seeing 
then we will say this person is actually no more dominant in terms of visual or another person which they are more dominant in hearing then we will say this person is more dominant in terms of auditory and the feeling is actually we call kinesthetic it forms our internal representations so therefore if our spouse is a very feeling person is a very kinesthetic dominant person we don't show them show see a lot of things we don't talk a lot of things we need to give our spouse a hug we need to touch them so that they can feel the love of you on the contrary if your spouse is auditory dominant which is hearing therefore you need to talk a lot of sweet talk your spouse is very sensitive towards sounds you need to say sweet talk to your spouse day in and day out you don't you can not touch your spouse that much but you must say something to make your spouse feel happy because your spouse receive information mainly and more dominantly in terms of hearing likewise is the C the person is more visual dominant of course in my class vision solutions we were going to help you to see to determine how the person is more dominant in whichever area therefore if you are possible you must come to my class and this is just a very big little bit of information which i can present in terms of clips because i'm going to teach this the whole set of the nlp patterns skill sets and how we change our mindsets how we do the proper and more effective communications in five days and i'm going to stand here to speak more than eight hours consecutive five days i don't like to use slides i prefer to do this because by drawing with the different colors I actually helping people with a visual person and everything is go one by one step by step is actually helping another type of person which we call auditory digital auditory digital this type of person is the person who are looking into process the person like me when I'm being trained as an engineer my academic is a chemical engineering and I'm my, by nature I am actually a person who is dominant by the vision but after my training as an engineer I become very step-by-step -step person that is my acquaintance I acquire this skill but by nature is actually see I see things I see people and I judge people by just one see, one kind of seeing. Of course, that is my unconscious. And consciously I know sometimes I do make mistakes by just see the person and then I dislike the person. I have to admit that. And it's not people with visual doing the same thing, but people who are more dominant in hearing or literally the same. Because when the people is very sensitive to the words, the first thing that pick up the phone, and then that person in the phone speak with a tone, speak with a with a um, speed of voice which he dislike, he will make a judgment to dislike that person. 
Therefore, it's very important for us to understand how a person receives information through our basic sensory. Therefore, we will be a very good communicator. This is a very simple illustration because I cannot go further and very detailed into this. But normally I will spend an hour or so to explain so that all my students they understand and they master these very basic principles of NLP. I have to stop here because a lot of times um, our attention span is actually very short. And by sitting there, if you can listen up to here and then you follow my video clips, I hope, and I assure you, I actually do whatever I could. But bear in mind, there are a lot of factors that actually come in that I can't. For example, I cannot make a very beautiful video, but I don't. But it doesn't matter, I believe. If the content is actually helpful, it's more than enough if I do a very beautiful videos and the content is lousy. With this, I thank you and I hope you can one day either you talk to me or you can come to my class because I believe NLP is something that is very, very important. And for every one of us, we actually need NLP techniques in our life so that we can form a better communication skill with any other people. Then we control our destiny. With the solutions in this company, my goal and my aim is to make my students and my coaching to master their destiny. Not only in terms of physical world, but also in terms of emotion, in terms of thinking pattern, and in terms of spirituality. With this, I thank you.